Lately, a lot of people have asked me how they can create clean, SEO-friendly URLs, which is the art of taking a long URL that has maybe many dynamic URL variables in it, such as this one here, and rewriting it to this friendlier version, the prettier, more clean version. And my hope is to pass along enough insight into how it all works so that everyone can customize all of their own clean URLs by themselves in the future, no matter how many variables the system needs to take in from the URL. If you don't already have an htaccess file on your server, we'll show you how to create one now. You can just open up Notepad, and then go to File, Save As, and just save it in your website main directory, the main folder for your website, on your local computer side, where we have all the rest of our website files. Now as save as type, you can just go to all files and then just make sure it has .htaccess as the extension. Save. Now you can see in Notepad you have a file called .htaccess. The file has no name, it only has an extension. And the extension is .htaccess. Now it's important if you already have an htaccess file on your live server online, it's important to go and download that and add to it. You don't want to overwrite what's there already if you happen to have one. So it's important you go and check within your FTP software to see if you have an HD access file in the main directory of your website. What we did just now is we created a new blank one and what that's going to do if you happen to have one on your server when we put this one up it's going to overwrite all the directives that you have in your existing one. So that's why it's very important to go and Grab your existing HT access file if it's there and add to it. Now within my HT access file, before any rewrite rules can be established, we have to turn the rewrite engine on. So what we'll do is we'll just type in a comment and anywhere that you see a pound sign, that means that line is commented out. That means it's just a comment for human reading. The server won't process that line. It's just for you to write things, little notes to yourself. So you can put a pound sign and then your comment. Now on the next line down, let's actually turn on the rewrite engine. So all you have to do is put in this string, rewrite engine on. Now the next comment I'm going to put in place is I want to rewrite for my file that's called projects.php. And this is what the rewrite rule looks like for that. You just type in rewrite rule, put a space, and then the caret symbol. Now the string of text that you have after the caret symbol is the new directory listing that you want to have. It really doesn't exist on my site, but I want people to navigate to that. And when they navigate to forward slash custom on my site, it's going to take them to projects.php. And I just named it custom to let you know that you could put any string there, any word. So now let me save that. I'm going to FTP this file to my web server live online. Now here I am on my live web server. Now I'll just type in forward slash custom. Press enter to load it. And you can see that my projects.php page loads up. And you can confirm that if we go to home and then hit the projects link, the project link links to projects.php. So all I would have to do is go into my code that's the header in my menu and change this link instead of navigating to projects.php I can make that link in the code navigate to custom and then when I load custom when I load this URL my projects.php comes up and I just named it custom just to let you know that you can put anything you want there now it gets more involved than that and we're gonna show you some more advanced examples right now go back into our HT access file and we're gonna write ourselves a couple of more notes that way we can understand what this NC and this L are doing in place there. So we can just go under the rewrite rule and put in, let me make this bigger, these two comments. The first comment says NC makes the rule non-case sensitive. So that means if somebody types in with a, a capital T here for the in the word custom, it'll still work. If you wanted to force it to always be lowercase and not let them put in capitals, then you can just remove the NC. Now the L that you see here 
makes this the last rule that this specific condition will match. And in our case, we're not actually using the rewrite condition line. We're just putting the whole rewrite rule into one line here. But if you've ever wondered what NC and L are doing in your HT access file, you can refer to these two comments here. Now, we're going to make a rewrite rule on my server for the user.php file with a dynamic URL variable of U. And this is how, if you have a social network or something, that your system would know how to render each user profile according to the dynamic URL variable. Now remember the opening picture? So at first it's going to, by default, it's going to be like this. We're going to make it look like this. All right, so directly under that comment, let's put in the rewrite rule. And don't worry, I'll explain every bit of this syntax to you. Now let me save this file by pressing Control S. I'm going to reload this. I'm going to FTP it up to my live web server. Okay, so now that I have this new rewrite rule, I can go to the pretty version of my user file, which currently you can see to get there, I have to go user.php question mark u equals jack. And that's what tells the user.php script which user to load out of the database. So since we have a pretty URL rule in place now for the users, we can navigate to that URL. And that is simply user forward slash jack. So you can see as many times as you refresh, you still get the correct user.php profile page to come up, but you have a nice pretty URL now. Now if you put in a different name there, it's going to load Adam from the database. So to make that like it was before, I would just have to put user.php question mark u equals Adam, and that will load the same exact page but one version of the URL is just a little more SEO friendly and pretty. And keep in mind this user.php file could be named poopoo.php. It can be named anything you want and it could be a secret name that nobody would know. That way they can never load up the URL this way because they would have no prior knowledge of what the actual file is named. You just serve them up the URL this way and it loads the page correctly and they cannot see what that PHP script is actually named. Now this example only deals with rewriting the URL if you have one dynamic URL variable, but you might have multiple dynamic URL variables and you need a rewrite rule for that. So we'll show you that right now and then we'll explain all the syntax that you see here and how it works. So I'm going to put in my final comment and my final rewrite rule. Now the comment says rewrite for article.php and we have dynamic URL variable of ID and a URL variable of title. And I'm actually going to show you the source code that I have for user.php and article.php. So you can see what the code that I have inside of those two files. And you'll notice that you can just access the get variables, the URL variables in the, the same normal way that your script did before. So I'm going to save this and re-FTP it, reload it. To my live web server. Okay, so now you can see that I have my article.php loaded with the proper URL variables going into it. So this is what that renders. The article ID is one and the article title is hello world. So you can see that my article.php script has full access to those URL variables coming in. Now I'm going to rewrite it in its clean format. Okay, here we go. So let's now reload the page with the clean format of the URL. And you can see that it works fine. You can load it up, press enter as many times as you want. It still comes up the same as it did before. And your article.php page has access to these. These are actually the get variables. This one and this one. This is your ID and this is the title. So now that you can see everything working, let me go back to the way it looked before. So you see? There's the unfriendly or dirty URL, and there is the clean version. Now I'm going to explain the syntax of these two rewrite rules, and then after that you should be well on your way to customizing all of your own clean URLs within your systems. All right, so this first one that we did, we took projects.php, and we made it so where the user could just navigate to custom, and that 
projects.php would come up. Now for the second example, we rewrote for user.php with a dynamic URL variable of the username. So what we have in the rewrite rule after the caret symbol is we put the word user or the string user. And then we put a forward slash to specify that that's going to be a directory. Then after the forward slash, we put regular expression logic. And this regular expression just reads that this part of the URL can have numbers 0 through 9. It can have uppercase and lowercase letters. But it can't have spaces or any other crazy characters like that unless you specify that here. For instance, if you wanted to let underscores be in the URL, for this part of the URL, you can put underscore there and it will allow it. So for my example, it's only going to allow numbers and uppercase, lowercase letters. And this plus just lets it be a string length, an undetermined string length. So basically, this is where the URL variable is derived in the rewrite. So when the rewrite occurs, this is going to derive the URL variable. And this one here is what represents that. So when the clean URL is navigated to, user.php is still going to get its dynamic URL variable of u. And the value it's going to have after the equal sign is going to be equal to whatever dynamic string in this part of the URL after the forward slash. That's what allows you to navigate to simply user forward slash and then the username. Okay, so really understanding regular expressions will help you leaps and bounds. And it'll help you move a lot faster when it comes to customizing your own clean URLs. Now for the article.php, which had ID and title, we rewrote the URL just to have more regular expression matching for all the parts of the URL we wanted. So we wanted it to say article, then forward slash, the article ID, forward slash, and then the article title. So these two groupings that you see here, in between the forward slashes of the URL are going to be resulting in these two variables, one and two. That way when article.php loads with its pretty URL version, your database is still going to know which incoming get variables that it has available. And these strings here that are going to be in the URL, in the clean URL, are going to be what determines what comes out of the database. So let's go back to the server online and let's grab that URL and then let's just pop it in here as a comment and we'll be able to see exactly what's happening. So if we put it right up against that, so article, we have article and forward slash, that is a constant, that's a static thing that isn't going to be dynamic in the URL. But this part of the URL is always going to be dynamic and so is this part. So that's why we have regular expression groupings in there to allow for a dynamic string to be in there. And that dynamic string is then represented as this variable one and this variable two. That way when article PHP loads, it can still operate like it normally does. So in this regular expression grouping, you can see that I'm allowing numbers zero through nine, uppercase and lowercase letters, and I'm allowing underscore and the hyphen the dash and then once it reaches a space that's where in the rewrite rule that you're going to put the original file name and the, the variable structure the URL variable structure so basically you just write rewrite rule space you put the caret symbol then the structure of your clean URL then space then you put the original dirty URL and its uh, URL variable structure that way the script can still operate like normal and it has get variables of ID and title still coming into it. Now I told you I would show you what the code looked like in my user.php file and my article.php file. And you can clearly see it's not very complex. It's just requesting the get variables and then rendering them on the page. Yours would be a lot more complex and would be doing a lot more things and it would be requesting data according to this ID title maybe. And the same with user.php. You would be using this dynamic variable and what we've done is we've run preg replace to sanitize it. 
It only allows letters and numbers to be in that string. It's a way of cleaning, filtering, and sanitizing the incoming get variable. So this that you see here highlighted in blue is simply a clean version of this by itself. So you just grab the get the incoming get variable from the URL. But this is just a way to add some cleansing to it. Same for article. We're grabbing the incoming get variable of ID and the incoming get variable of title. And it all still works like normal. You shouldn't have to change very much within your files unless you want to add more considerations to the script for the title or whatever if you want to check and make sure the title is correct for that ID that article ID or whatever that's up to you but this is how you get access to those and it's really the same way you did before before you cleaned the URL you were getting access to these variables this way and you still get access to them that way after you clean the URLs up so I'm going to have article.php source code available for you, user.php source code, and our .ht access file. All of this source code will also be directly under where the video plays at developphp.com, okay? If you enjoyed the video you just watched, click on the subscribe button to tune into Adam's channel. He produces new videos on a regular basis. Below the subscribe button are a few more of his video tutorials that other viewers have found to be helpful or inspiring. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.